from the tiny foothold taken on the beaches of Normandy in June of 1944. Allied forces have established an ironclad front across a once occupied Europe. They drove deep into enemy territory, scoring victory after victory while freeing millions of people from the clutches of tyranny. But success has not come at an easy price. Our forces moved with shocking speed, stretching supply lines thin while exhaustion set in amongst the troops. Now, with the onset of winter, Allied command has been forced to call a halt while supply and manpower situations are worked out. To alleviate pressure elsewhere, the rugged, forested Ardennes region in eastern Belgium offers a sleepy front, able to be held by new recruits and battle-weary troops as they find some rest before the assault on the German homeland begins. Listen up. We're going to be taking over sentry duty from the airborne over checkpoint box. Now, seeing as how there ain't nothing there, we're going to build some stuff. So, guys, this is Company of Heroes 2 Ardennes Assault. Um, oh. We got rear echelon squads available to pitch in. Of course, this is a uh, campaign, so there's going to be a bit of dialogue. I'm going to try my best not to talk over it. Um, hopefully the captain doesn't talk anymore so I can do a bit of an intro. Okay, so obviously this is not a Total War game, uh, as you guys probably have already guessed. This is Company of Heroes 2, made by Relic, which is another company owned by uh, Sega, or Game Developer Studio. Um, it's a... Uh, Real-time strategy game set in World War II, of course. You can see these are American troops, and we are in the Ardennes offensive of World War II. Now, oh, it's really wanting me to click on this, but I do want to get this intro done. Um, basically, I wanted to break the monotony of, uh, of Total War. Not that it's boring me, not that it's, um, you know, um, too much for me. I just want to get something out there that maybe somebody who doesn't just want to watch Total War all the time can watch. And yeah, I'm just going to be uploading this first episode. If it does well in a couple of days or maybe even a day, depending on how you guys take it, uh, I'll upload more. But if it gets shit on or doesn't get any likes, it doesn't like if people don't really care about it, I, just, I won't continue it. I won't waste your guys' time and I'll continue on with Total War. But it's just something for those people that want to see something different. But uh, fine, let's click this thing because the game really wants me to. And let's get two rear echelon troops. Um, figured out when it comes to building defenses, so they'll help with the checkpoint. Thanks, Captain Derby, for cutting me off again. But, um, yeah, like I said, this is a World War II game. Uh, World War II is out of, out of the modern era. Basically anything past, um, the Napoleonic Wars. World War II is definitely my favorite conflict. Uh, anything later than the Napoleonic Wars to now, essentially, this is my favorite conflict of modern times Rear echelon squad ready for action. because it was just so epic oh yeah yeah my my commentary is going to be a little bit jagged on this in the first couple of missions All right, let's move out, boys. because of this guy basically so hopefully that doesn't bother you guys too much but we're going to get going here let's go. also I just like the game because it looks really good um, and thankfully, because I got my new PC about a month and a half ago, I can actually play it on highest quality. And yes, this is a bit of a tutorial mission, but this is just what I thought I would show you guys in this first episode. It is a bit long, um, so you guys will get a feel for the game if you haven't played it before. And if you have, well, you're probably happy that I'm playing it, so there we go. So we have two Rifleman squads and uh, Rear Echelon. You could finally make it. Yeah, well, this war ain't no hurt end. Figured we had plenty of time to mosey on over. Indeed. Well, shit. We wouldn't want you boys pulling a muscle hurrying on our account. I'm gonna get the men back to Rock Rat for hot meals and showers. They could sure use it. They could sure use it. Yep. Alright, so there's uh, Captain Jackson. Checkpoint's got to be flushed out. Okay. Getting a bit crowded around here. There they go. Pathfinders. Mm. If we're going to sit out the winter here, we need some more cover. Let's start by building a fighting position over there. Between the two trenches. No problem. Let's do it. Oh, I got a... There we go. 
Uh, right there. Okay, that works. Good. We'll just get both squads to do it so it's a bit faster. So yeah, if you've never played Company of Heroes 2 before, it's an, uh, a real-time strategy game. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure how to describe it. it um, this is obviously, this is not near close to... This is nowhere close to how the game, oh, how the game actually is. Uh, on the in the actual game, goddamn, um, there's capture points and uh, resources and fuel that you need to capture around the map to uh, to fight your opponent, who is a uh, a real time AI that's doing exactly the same thing as you. They have the same objectives as you, which is to basically capture as much stuff as they can and then kill you. Um, so it's quite interesting, and of course, as we get further into the campaign, it becomes that. But the first few missions are a bit narrative, a bit of narrative, and they're quite epic. Um, so hopefully they uh, they um, interest you guys. Oh shit! Artillery. That's a good idea. There's an artillery strike. Let's get in the watchtower. Try not to move the camera around as much as as much as I can. One of the big things I love about this game is the atmosphere and the actual sound. Oh, we got some Germans up ahead. There they are. So we got some Panzer Fusiliers. Couple squads of them, Ober Commando West, uh, West soldiers. And we also have some Volks Grenadiers. That's just saying they're getting right on top of us. God damn. Yeah, lob a grenade out there. But yeah. All right. I'll definitely do that. There we go. Right, so you can see that this unit is pinned. This unit, before it died, was suppressed. It was a yellow um, triangle with an exclamation point. That means that they have slowed movement and they're more susceptible to enemy fire. Um, when a unit is pinned, they um, they actually duck their heads down and they don't fire back. And your, your only option is to basically make them retreat using T. Or just let them die. Essentially, that's that's all they can do. They might, they may come out of suppression by themselves, but it's not quite. It's not very uh, very likely. Anyway, we're going to get these guys to uh, help out over here. Some uh, some crazy stuff here. You can see the re the Germans are now retreating. You can tell by this this uh, this symbol here. There we go. Right, so we we now have access to all of our abilities. No contact as of yet. We'll update you as we hear news. All right, I'm basically waiting for a time where I can actually control my units freely instead of this narrative stuff, so I can tell you about the game. Um, I'll let you listen to this. Oh, here we go. Never mind. There we go. All right. Call in some paratroopers. Maybe we can flank these bastards. Maybe we can. There's a drop zone behind those houses. All right. Just waiting for it to let me uh, let me do it. There we go. We'll call them in right here. Oh, that squad moved up a bit too much. Yeah, you can see these two units are pinned. That's good. Try to get that uh, that 50 cal shooting at that building. This unit is now suppressed. 
so that's good. These paratroopers can come in and kind of mess these guys up. We also need them to clear out this house. Oh, we have an MG. Let's take that out first. Take out that MG42. There we go. The other guy picks it up, but he's dead. Alright. Let's push up behind these guys and take them out. Oh, shit. I didn't mean for these guys to charge right up. I'm gonna get them to throw a grenade in this house. There we go. Clear it out. Oh, maybe not so clear it out. Oh, the paratroopers are in trouble. They, uh, they didn't, they didn't succeed in the mission like I wanted them to. Damn. Alright, we, we can bring in another unit, at least. Uh, I'm gonna get this guy back here to be safe. We're gonna bring these riflemen up. We're gonna throw a grenade in this building. And, uh, I'm gonna call in some more. Oh! Never mind. Oh, we need, uh, we need to be clear. That was just for the tutorial purposes, right? Alright, I'm just gonna throw this grenade in here. Oh, it cleared out. Never mind. There we go. Not good. We got crouched on all sides. Village is surrounded. Can we get across to Krinkeld? No. The whole place is crawling with Germans. All right. We need to raise other sectors. Confirm what the hell's going on here. Vastano, our radio's gonna need a boost. Get over to the tower in the forest. We can tie into it. All right, I might be able to just talk now. I think so. Okay. So, like I mentioned, I'm definitely not a pro at this game. Uh, I don't get to play it as much as I really wanted to. Um, so as I play this game more, of course, the skills will go up. I'll learn more about the game. Um, but anyway, now I have an actual, some actual time to tell you guys what this all is. Company of Heroes 2 is a real-time strategy game, like I said three times now, where you control your units and uh, buildings in the, the typical sense. I can't actually go over there because of camera lock, but there's buildings over there that I can recruit troops, upgrade things, your stereotypical um, re real-time strategy, but they also have uh, things you can call in with resources, and you can see they have... Uh, excellent. They have various resources that they require, such as the paratroopers needing manpower, and um, of course population cap. The strafing run from the P-47 takes ammunition, uh, or munitions as it's called. Supply drop it gives you munitions uh, that your men can pick up. It costs manpower. And then we have the uh, P-47 rocket run which costs more munitions. Um, you can also upgrade units using munitions. And yeah, there's, it's, it's a really interesting game. It really is. So we're gonna call in more paratroopers here. And sadly, I can't, I can't replenish this unit anywhere because uh, we don't have anything set up to actually do that. Looks like we're going in. So I may have to take a few units from these guys. I might take this uh, this machine gun. But you can see we have access to a few of the American troops. We have... Um, I'm actually going to get all these guys out of here. Um, get these guys here. i get this machine gun out of here. There we go. Uh, so we have we have 50 cal machine guns, we have pathfinders, we have uh, paratroopers, of course, we have riflemen. We have access to a few of the uh, the basic American units. So I'm gonna give um, I would give these guys some of these, but it would take a lot of our munitions. I kind of want to save that for the strafing run. Um, so we're gonna take these four squads. We're going to take these four squads to act on this uh, this radio antenna that we need to take out. And I'm going to give this unit the MG that we took out earlier. Be because you can pick those up. And I might actually call in more paratroopers just to help out. Although, um, maybe not. So we're going to take this unit back. And we're going to bring up some of these. Because I think they have... Maybe they're not upgraded. Okay. Pathfinders, I believe, later can have upgrades uh, with snipers and all that stuff. Although, that might actually be rangers. I think that's actually rangers that get upgrades. So, yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and set up the two machine guns. About here. Maybe we'll push them up a little bit more. Basically, there's some enemies uh, up in these woods. 
and I'm gonna just get my machine gun set up so that we can mess them up basically. So we have a 50 cal and an MG34. I might have called it an MG42 earlier, that was a mistake. Um, anyway, we're gonna keep moving. I will move up my infantry to support them of course, just in case. Alright, so we're gonna get our paratroopers up into cover. And our Pathfinders we're going to get up there as well. You can tell cover by uh, the colors. They have uh, these dots. Oh. Our machine guns aren't quite ready to fire. There we go, they're firing now. Our 50 cal isn't though. There we go, now it is. So that's going to pin these enemy units, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want. We have another unit coming in. So we're going to shift our, uh, our MG's field of fire. We're going to shift both of our MGs field of fire so we can take them out. And we definitely need to get rid of these guys. You can see the MGs just rip enemy infantry apart and all of these units are now pinned. So uh, we're going to throw a frag grenade and take these guys out. There we go. You can see our cover is getting shredded by our own MGs. That's a bit of a mistake. I definitely did not do that intentionally. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get the rest of these units pushing up as well. Um, our Pathfinders can set up a beacon. And that makes um, that makes our paratroopers more accurate uh, in their drop. So we can see that there's some enemies here. We're going to go ahead and call in a strafing run. Now how this works is, if I was to call it in like this... You can see uh, the, the P-47 would come in from here and take ages, but if I call it in going this way, it would only come in from this edge, so it would be a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and call it in about here, because there may be enemies scattered around. And this is also, this is also going to give us a line of fire, or not line of fire, line of sight on anything here, because the plane's going to report to us what it can see. So we can see there's a few more infantry units here. It took out a couple of these, uh, a couple of these Fallschirmjäger. Fallschirmjäger are going to be really dangerous. So uh, we definitely want to be close. But now you can see how small this was. Back in the town, it was huge. Look at this. Um, if we were to call them in around here, uh, it's a lot bigger. But if you use the beacons, just like in, um, just like on D-Day, I believe uh, Pathfinders use this. Um, and that helped the allies drop their paratroopers a lot more accurately. Uh, also, the beacons can reinforce. As don't don't uh, don't ask me why that works, but it does. But anyway, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to pick up the pace on this because we're gonna be in this video for like an hour at this rate. So let's speed this up. And you can see even with it, it's still not that accurate. Um, but now we're gonna be firing our 50 cal at these guys. So that's really good. So it's gonna be pinning them and suppressing them, which is very useful. So yeah, now they're suppressed and they can't fire back because it's a little bit of long range. They're now pinned. So I'm gonna get the machine guns to fire at these guys, and uh, they're not—they're not having a good time. They definitely are not. We're gonna—we're gonna go ahead and push up with these guys now. Now that the enemy infantry is suppressed, we're gonna go ahead and just finish them off. And uh, since they're suppressed, they are—they are harder for us to hit, but um. They aren't, they aren't firing back, so we're just going to absolutely destroy them. Alright, so I'll take these guys out as quickly as possible. And then we'll, uh, we'll move up. There might be another unit left. I'm not quite sure. Nope, it doesn't appear. There doesn't appear to be another one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get the machine guns back here. Just in case any more Germans appear. Actually, I may set it up back here. I'm gonna set the 50 cal back here just in case any more show up. And yeah, this is a bit of an introduction to uh, the capturing of points. These are gonna be scattered in the actual game. These are scattered all over the map, and you have to take those, of course. But uh, in this mission, you don't really have to do that. All right, so we've repelled the Germans from this area. All right.
All right, let's get the machine gun back then. All right, armor. Okay, so we have the we have Baker Company here now. Excellent. So we have a. We don't know how long this is going to take, so I want a BAR weapons rack set up. Yes, yeah, so you can see this is uh, the buildings I was talking about. You can see we have access to different units that we can recruit. Um, so he wants us to build a bar weapons rack, so we're going to build that. Once that thing is up, I want infantry to gun up. Captain Edwards. Yeah, so we're going to give some of our infantry um, some uh, automatic rifles. So that's cool. Some Brownings. All right. So these cost a lot. Um, All right, Baker, get ready to move out. I'm actually going to wait. Enemy to reach the airborne, boys in airborne. Jackson, this is Edwards. Get your men to the edge of the village. We're going to try and form an evac corridor. Roger. Moving now. I'm going to get more bar. Oh, no, that's bazooka. I don't want a bazooka. I want two bars. There we go. All right. So we could build a half track that would help uh, carry some troops into battle. Uh, and I think we might as well. We do need to get up there. But, uh, we, uh, oh well. Excellent. Right, so we definitely want to help take out that. Okay, I'm going to move up the tanks then. So our M10 and the Stewarts, um, we'll get them moving up. And to be fair, we could get, uh, two squads moving up as well. Oh, they took they took it out themselves. Good, but there is another one, so we're gonna drive up the M10, and we're gonna take that thing out. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that's not what I wanted at all. All right, it's gonna start firing at me, I think. Yeah, we're gonna prioritize vehicles with him. Should be able to take him out in another shot. There we go. So he's going to support the infantry. And we're going to get these guys coming around the flanks. Uh, we have a half track somewhere. There it is. So this squad's going to get in that. And our infantry, we're going to get them moving. They're going to support the... Support the cavalry, basically. Armored cavalry. Alright, we're going to get the steward up here to start helping out. Oop. This guy's going to get up here. Oh, we have some Obersoldaten. That's interesting. Now, something I didn't touch on earlier was veterancy. And you can see this unit has one star of veterancy. And basically, as ve as the veterancy goes up, uh, it gives you different stats. So, for example, uh, I don't think I can really show you. Uh, greater sight range. Inf uh, improve accuracy and rate of fire and increase awareness of their surroundings so I guess faster or something so that's it's, it's interesting you really do need to make sure that your units don't die and um, this is very interesting why isn't it okay there we go so you definitely don't want to lose units and um, and veterancy makes them a lot better so you definitely want to keep your veteran units alive All right, so we're going to move up. All right, that that MG is still active. We definitely don't want that. We're going to go ahead and march up. We're going to take out some of this enemy infantry with our armor. All right. There we go. I think the MG was taken out, but I'm not quite sure. Nope, still there. Oh, a Luke's. Oh no. Oh, don't go. Don't give your rear armor, you idiot. Oh man. Pathfinding. Why you do this? Right. I think we need Mr. Uh, Mr. Wolverine to take on that Luke's. We're gonna try. We're gonna try to take out this MG first. All right, take him out.
You don't want to mess with me, my friend. Alright, one more shot from the Wolverine should take him out. There we go. Alright. Oh god. The Wolverine should take it out, yeah. I thought I thought it was a panther for a second. That scared me. All right, there we go. Between the three tanks, we uh, we took him out pretty good. All right, we're gonna get our infantry up here, uh, our half track, and we're gonna call this in. There we go. Let's get these uh, let's get these tanks moving. These uh, these Volks grenadiers are. Alright, nothing. Gonna get the tanks moving up. I'll get the infantry to go down through this uh, this little town area. Whoa, look at this. Alright. So you can see our tanks are uh, our tanks are leveling up, which is great. That gives access to uh, the high velocity armor piercing, so that's what I was just looking at. And we also get uh, we get flanking speed later. All right, we're gonna engage these guys. Uh, we killed a couple of Germans over here. That's good. But yeah, you can see all of our uh, all of our tanks are leveling up, which is quite nice. Somehow, somehow these Germans aren't dying. Oh, interesting. Did my did my infantry die? Oh wow, they must have. Interesting. It it's supposed to call in. Uh... Weird. I all I got was an was a half track. I didn't get any infantry. Huh? Unless they died. I mean, they might have. How are these guys not dead yet? Apparently, apparently he's in pretty good cover. There we go. Oh, all I had to do was move forward. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, this Stewart to come over here. We're gonna move forward with these tanks. Now you're fine. You're just fighting some Volks grenadiers. No big deal. All right, we're gonna push up here and capture this. And uh, we have, oh, we have some enemy infantry coming in. Artillery. Oh crap. We're gonna have to focus on this MG. All right. Basically, I'm just I'm just gonna run up here. That'll uh, that'll start the next part of the mission. All right. We're gonna have to get these units out of here. All right. Take the first group and guide them back to the base. I'll bring up the second group once you've pushed off. Yes, sir. First group on me. Sounds good. All right, so <laughs> this unit, this this building's been bas basically destroyed. Soon enough, it's just going to be flattened. All right, so we need to protect these guys. If any German armor shows up, we'll have to. Uh, we'll definitely have to try to protect them. We're gonna get these guys moving up here. You can see we destroyed that building, which is great. We got our 50 cal's ripping them up. This is great. Um, 
Second Whatever. Group, get ready. Keep that area covered oh, right, 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 right. We have a second group to go, go, go. evacuate. Okay, I thought I thought they were all, all gone already. Okay. We're probably going to have to deal with some German armor. Get to that point. Got a little bit here. Right, we haven't seen anything. Uh, most of the Americans are retreating. Okay, that's all of us. So that's good. I'm covering the rear. All right, get that infantry back here, but keep that corridor open. Oh, here we go. We got some German armor. Oh, it's just some light tanks. Oh, never mind. Oh crap. Oh wow. Keep moving. Everything's going wrong. Run. No, just back up. Just back up. Run. Ah, oh, damn. All right, we're all just running. All my infantry are running on their own. Run. All remaining units reporting in. By the way, that was supposed to happen. That wasn't because I'm an idiot. Derby, any sign of Jackson out there? Uh, we lost sight of him falling back. Dang. Germans are everywhere back there. Germans are pouring in more troops. What's the plan? Fall back. Ain't no more use wasting lives here. We'll link up with whoever's left and figure nice. out what the hell just hit us. Coordinated defense. There we go. That's a mission complete. We have defeated the enemy forces. Uh, Victory is ours. Wouldn't say we uh, we defeated them, my friend. All right. Proceed to the mission briefing. So yeah. Of course. Uh, everything was going swimmingly for the Allies until they reached the Ardennes, basically in the winter. The Germans actually managed to make a very strong counteroffensive toward uh, against them, and uh, it completely caught them by surprise. It was very devastating, of course. On the 16th of December 1944, a massive artillery barrage caught Allied forces off guard, signaling the start of an unexpected German counteroffensive in the quiet Ardennes forests. Their intention split the Allied lines in half and ultimately claimed the valuable harbor at Antwerp. Their timing is impeccable. With the cold winds of winter blowing in, our superior air forces have been grounded, and the Germans are taking full advantage of the situation. Two full panzer divisions hit the weakly defended Losine Gap along a 45-mile front, driving deep into Belgium and Luxembourg. Within 24 hours of the Germans unleashing their desperate offensive, the initiative in the battle for Europe completely changed hands. The 5th Panzer Division attacked Bastogne and St. Viet, aiming to capture these strategic road junctions and secure their hold on the region. U.S. forces now scramble to stem the tide of Germans pouring into Allied territory. Though our lines may have bent, our men will not break. The German offensive will be turned back. Okay, so he described it a lot better than I did. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, guys. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay, we need to choose uh, what we're going to bring. Honestly, I think... That mech, rangers, and, uh... Mech, rangers, and airborne would be the best, but... I know he's good, obviously. The rangers. So, deploy rangers, alright. I think we'll use, uh... I think we're gonna use Baker, Abel, and Fox. 
Purchase? Excuse me? Oh. What do you mean purchase? Oh, okay. Apparently I don't have them. Right. So I own Fox Company now, so we're going to take those three. Uh, Baker Abel Fox, yep. So there we go, guys. Redeploy to our region Arden immediately. New orders as follows. Develop and execute. Defensive plan. Priority target. Elselborn Elsel Rid Ridge. God damn. Alright. Any uh, commentary? No. They just want me to uh, do that. Okay. Now we have to go to Elsenborn Ridge. And we have to take out... Or we have to hold the ridge from the Germans. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the first episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down below as always. And tell me if you want to see this series continue. Um, the likes and the views really do show, basically, and the comments, of course, show me um, that you guys want to continue this. This was just a test. If you guys don't want to see it, that's fine. I'll play it in my own time. Just have fun with it. Um, because I, I've been watching a lot of Company of Heroes 2 um, live battle casts, like multiplayer, so I, I thought I'd give it a try, play the, uh, the campaign and stuff, get, try to get into it. So if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and comment down below as always, and if you enjoyed this video, uh, look forward to the next one if it comes out, because, yeah, it, it'll be, <laughs> hopefully you'll enjoy that one too. Anyway guys, uh, this has been Overkill as always, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.